video. This is Sarah from Japan, and I was just looking at, uh, just flipping through my Bible, waiting for my last video to load up, and I, I flipped over and um, just kind of randomly, and uh, I found Psalms 123. And I wanted to, to read this psalm for all my fellow watchmen out there. Um, you, you're doing a wonderful job leading others to the truth, the, the whole truth of, you know, of God's salvation, not just partial truth, you know, you're, you're telling 100% biblical truth, and the Lord will bless you for that. And so today, um, I found a psalm, now just now, I just found a psalm that kind of pretty much sums up our feelings, our general feelings for us, the watchmen who are watching all the other Christians, you know, who are backslidden and telling, you know, telling lies, saying, oh, you know, you don't have to worry about repentance or anything thing like that. You know, you're saved by grace, not, not by works, lest anyone should boast. So you don't have to worry about, you know, if you want to sin, it's okay. Because you're saved already, and the blood of Jesus Christ will cover that. That's a horrible lie to tell. Okay? Just got done reading. Okay, Luke. Luke chapter 13. Yeah. It says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. The narrow gate? What narrow gate? The gate to heaven. Okay? It's not smooth sailing once you get saved. You have to strive, you have to fight to get through. Okay, so all of you who are, you know, teaching once saved, always saved, you know, and cheap grace, knock it off. Because people are going, going to be deceived and they're going to fall away from the kingdom. They're going to go onto the broad road instead of the narrow and straight path to heaven. Stop it. I rebuke the spirit that makes you do that. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I come against that spirit. I mean it. Stop it. Stop telling lies. Tell the truth. Read the words out of this book. Stop telling lies. Alright, for all those watchmen out there, you know, I really look up to all of you guys and I hope that you know that I know I've been called as well to be a watchman. And if I say something that is out of line or not biblical, you better call me on it, okay? I'm still, though, a disciple like everybody else, though. I don't know everything. And so if I'm wrong about something, please come to me and tell me about it in a nice, civil manner, okay? If you're not nasty to me, it will block you. Anyway, so, Psalms 123. All right, this is for my fellow watchmen out there. God bless you all. Okay, a song of ascents. Unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their masters. That's us. We're looking to the hand of our master here. As the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. We are filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn of those who are at ease. You know, just sitting back, not doing their part, not, not helping out the kingdom, you know? Being pew potatoes. Telling them, oh, you don't have to sweat. You know, telling lies. And not doing anything to glorify the Lord. Those who are out there more worried about the stupid American elections, you know? Who would rather, you know, the Christians. They're supposed to be Christians. I've seen some pretty outrageous stuff. Like Newt Gingrich and a nasty, was a nasty thong kind of thing. And just trying to degrade him. And, you know, how is that being Christian-like? Really, those of you who call on the name of the Lord, you better be honorable to the Lord. Okay? It's disgusting. And I'm sick of seeing it. I'm sick of all of these Christians more concerned with, you know, what is it, uh, nasty propaganda against the, the candidates they don't like. Alright? I don't have any favorite candidates. In fact, I don't really trust any of them. You know, this world is under the ruler, you know, of, of you know, the darkness, the, uh, the ruler of lies. Okay? As Paul Kidd put it, he's the lion king and all these are all these little minions, you know? As 
far as I'm concerned, they're all corrupt. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, you know, it saddens me that the country I grew up in, that I was proud of, it's going down the toilet, so we might as well open up our eyes and, you know, face the facts here. Alright? It's the new Babylon. And it's going down the toilet. Alright? So quit wasting your time on this stuff that doesn't matter. Get your eyes on the Lord. You know, stop reading this stupid stuff on the internet about your favorite uh, candidate that you love to hate. You know? Be a servant of the Lord. If you love the Lord, the Lord says, If you love me, why don't you do what I tell you? Why aren't any of us doing what he was, we were commanded to do? Why aren't you out there helping with the gospel? Why aren't you loving your neighbor? Instead, you're walking past him, you know, too busy working on your texts about who you're going to smear next. I rebuke that spirit. All right? And so do all of us other watchmen, okay? Alright? So, Paul Kidd, Sandy Connor Smith, this is for you. Okay? This is a call, this, this psalm is for you. Because I share with you your righteous anger and your holy indignation at the people these days, especially the ones who call themselves Christians. Where is your, where is your love, Christians? You're acting more like Satan than you are Jesus Christ. And I rebuke that. You know, there's some of us here, you know, who don't have the freedom you do to go out openly and preach the gospel, okay? Some of us don't have that ability to go to even, to even go to church and have fellowship openly, okay? Everything I do here, I do at the risk of getting caught, okay? And if I get caught, you know, my family threatens to take my kids from me. But my loyalty, my number one loyalty is to my God. I don't make excuses. All of you need to stop making excuses to do the right thing. You know, you have to choose. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot hold hands with the devil, you know, and walk with the Lord. You cannot be friends with this world and be a follower of Christ. All right? So anyway, um, I'm going to read this through because I got sidetracked. But anyway, um, unto you I lift my eyes... O you who dwell in the heavens, behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, the, as the eyes of a maiden to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn of those who are at ease, okay, with the contempt of the proud. We're sick and tired of you. We watchmen who are true Christians, the true Saints out there are sick of all you fakers. You know? If you don't have something godly and intelligent to say, then just stick a cork in it. Alright? If you don't want to help the kingdom, if you are not for Jesus Christ, then you're against him. You better get out of the way. Okay? Get out of the way so those of us who really do truly care and care about the things of the Lord, care about what his, you know, heart is feeling, who care about the lost, can actually get in and help people. You don't want to help? Get out of the way. I'm sorry this is kind of a uh, strong message here. I know it seems harsh, but I do say it in love, okay? If you're not right with the Lord... If there's anything in your heart that you know is not right with the Lord, you need to repent now. Seek Him now. Seek His face while He can still be found. Okay, because we all know. We can see the signs. You know, He told us we would know, you know, the seasons. We could tell which season we're in. We're in the season. Okay, and if you're a true Christian, you know what I mean. Alright, it's time to turn away from all that worldly stuff. And turn your hearts back to the Lord. Don't don't forget, you know, um, your first love. In uh, 
Revelations 3, I believe, 2 or 3, it talks about, you know, the churches, the seven churches, and it mentions in there. Let me find it real quick. All right. Revelations. Let me read it to you because these end times, the seven churches, they're talking about us, the seven types of Christians, kind of the seven churches. All right. And um, it says here to the church of Ephesus. Uh, the church of Ephesus, yeah, in chapter 2, Revelations. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. Well, some of us are bearing those who are evil. The less the Laodiceans are bearing those who are evil. Okay. And you have, test, you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and found them liars. And you have per persevered and had, have patience, and have labored for my namesake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. That you have left your first love. Okay? Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent. He's telling you to repent. These are saved people. If it were not necessary to repent after getting saved, then why does he say to repent to the church? The church is already saved, right? Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. He's going to snuff out their light. That sounds pretty scary to me. My light being snuffed out scares me. It should you. Unless you repent. And that's uh, Revelation 2, uh, verses 2 through 5. Okay? It says all this, also this too. It continues on. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans, I guess, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So if you're gonna, you know, you better, it's time to listen up. If you have an ear to hear, you better listen, he's saying. All right? So, um, let's look at this here. What's wrong? Let's look at the Laodiceans, what it says about that. Because there's so many of those type of church people, the Laodiceans, okay? Thyatra, no, that's right, Sardis, oh, yes. Uh, chapter 3, verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things I say, the Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. So there's, those are you sitting on you, those of you sitting on your backside, your Laodiceans, okay? I wish you could, I wish, I could wish you were hot or cold. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither hot, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. It's going to vomit you out. You make him sick. Your lack of passion makes him sick. Because you say I am rich and beca have become wealthy. It's prosperity doctrine. Because... You say, I am rich, and I have become, you have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You're blind, and you're naked. You're like the naked, you know, like, you're, like the emperor's new clothes, that story in the emperor's new clothes. You don't even realize that you're naked. You think you're all that, but you're not. You think you have so much, but you don't have anything at all. That's why you have no passion. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with the eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. So I say this to you too. In the Spirit of Jesus Christ, who's saying this to you, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Again, that word repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. Open the door to him. Okay? To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Alright, so that's the end of my message for tonight. I'll see you all, um, probably tomorrow. Alright, so for all you watchmen, keep it up. May the Lord bless you greatly. Okay? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good night.